Hi, I'm uh, Mick Govey from Egon World. Uh, this is one of the permissions I shoot on up here in Cumbria. Uh, these are outbuildings and they're full of feral pigeons. They're doing some work on the roofs uh, and the feral pigeons in the way, they're causing a right mess in this place. Uh, so we're here today, we've got the Air Arms TDR FAC, uh, which is, I've got it uh, turned down quite a bit because they're close range. Uh, and we've got the, the Pulse Italian thermal scope, I've got the Axion thermal spotter, uh, and we're going to use the tripod just set up in a corner so I can see myself into a corner. Uh, the fellas are behind this door, I can hear them already. So uh, here we go, let's go and get some. Now this way seems to settle. I think we just have to wait for them to, uh, to come back in. Right, we're inside the barn now. Uh, when we first come in, there must be 30 pigeons all took flight straight out. Some's come back in and it's just coming through one window, straight through the one, just checking the place out. There's a little bob hole in the far corner, which they come into as well, usually coming in twos and threes. We've just had one from there. We've got that on video. Uh, as you can see, the state of the floor in this place is actually horrendous and it's rotten, so we've got to be careful where we're standing. We're doing this in the daytime. Uh, because we've got another thing planned for this evening uh, but we could always come back in and, and uh, have another go when it's darker but the way things are going it's that hot the pigeons are coming in taking shelter so uh, we think we should have a should have a good uh, a good result today uh, all the kits working and we just need the pigeons to play ball with us and we should be all right Pigeons are coming in constantly, but they're just getting instant recognising that something's wrong, not right and we're here. So I've gone to the truck and got myself a little bit of camo netting. Pull this piece of timber framework over. It's giving me a little bit of cover, just hopefully long enough to get a shot on them. Uh, they are a bit flighty, it is daytime. If it's night time, they're coming in and they'll be staying put. But uh, like I say, if we have to, we'll come back and we'll get some more later on. But. Uh, I'm confident we'll get a few today. In fact, I can hear them already. The smell in this place is absolutely outstanding. It's a pity we haven't got uh, smelly vision. A few, a few guys to really appreciate what we're going through for you. So Axion uh, thermal spotter, uh, even though it's daytime, some of these pigeons will add into corners, you'll pick an eat sauce up and you know where to wait for it to pop its head out. It's always difficult in the daytime, they're going to come in and go out uh, as soon as they see you. Night times are different, but kettle of fish altogether. You'll, uh, you, can, you can take one feral pigeon on one of the rafters and next to it will be another one, it won't move, uh, it might just hop along the bench, <laughs> along, the, along the beam. But, uh, it's generally much easier at night time because they're not taking flight. Daytime's always going to be a bit of a challenge. So hopefully with all the, all the gear, with the, with the action and the, and the Italian, we'll, uh, we'll be getting a few. Here we go. Lasted, landed on one of the cross beams. I could just see its tail. Absolutely no point at all taking a shot at that. We need to get a uh, full body view of it before I attempt it. Good thing is the roof's coming off, as we've seen earlier. 
and so uh, it's not an issue putting a pellet into the uh, into the beams. But uh, we've got this, we've got it turned right down, so it's not going to uh, make immense damage. But as you can see from the ceiling and the roof, there's plenty of work to be done on here. I could just see the tail. It uh, eventually moved around so I could just see its head. Uh, I just moved a little bit further down this, this framework. Uh, excellent head shot. The RSS Superdome straight to its head, came down, flapped a little bit as they do with head shots, but uh, quite a clean new main kill. So I'm happy with that. RWS Superdome's working quite well. Another one down. There was two were in there. I thought the one that was short had flown, but uh, it's time to hear it drop to the floor. So happy. The beauty of air rifles uh, for, for, for this for this sort of pest control over poison is that there's no secondary poison. You can poison pigeons, any sort of pest, rats. You can, can't guarantee it's going to die in the spot. Something will come along and pick up a carcass that's already poisoned, such as an owl or any bird of prey, and you get secondary poisoning. Uh, and then you're starting to obviously take, you're taking pest control to another level where you're taking out animals that you don't want to be taking out. So that's why we never get involved with poison. It's uh, poison free pest control is what we're doing. Uh, and that way you completely eliminate the possibility of secondary poisoning on any of the animals. Not only that, but it could be a pet, it could be a cat, it could be a dog, pet dog, pet cat, that picks up uh, a poison carcass, then you've got that on your hands then. And that's, uh, that is something we really want to avoid. So poisoning, the big no-no for me. Another thing about the pigeons is that, uh, especially if you're in the woods with wood pigeons, you'll never hear them come in. The first you know about it is when they're leaving, with they're flapping their wings and away. Sometimes you might get a clap of the wing as they're just about to land, but generally they'll glide in silently and make a row when they, when they leave. Uh, you will get wood pigeons coming inside here. I've shot them inside factories before, but generally it's the ferals. Ferals don't tend to roost up in trees like wood pigeons do. They'll come into the internal buildings and sit up and uh, make all this mess, as you can see. But uh, we've just had two, two come in, we took two. There's another one up there, I know there is, uh, but we can't see them at the moment. And I'm not gonna break cover, I'm trying to find out where it is and scare itself, hopefully. Others will come in, see him roosting, perhaps join him, sit on the beam next to him, and we'll take that one. So it's always good to have a plan. We just had another two coming through the bubble. You know, one flew back into the rafters, head in the usual position where you can't see it. One stayed in the, in the triangle bubble. I took that, that's been knocked straight outside. So uh, hopefully that'll hit the roof and roll down so we'll be able to pick that one up. But that was the case when you go feraling, hand ratting. There's also going to be some that's uh, unretrievable. But uh, hopefully, I think we're, we're getting up to double figures now. So. Uh, not been a bad day, another two just come in. Let's see if we can take care of these. Stay still. Right, we've got about 10 on the ground now, uh, and there's one, there's quite a few that's laying belly up. I've noticed the ferals are coming in and they're seeing them having a bit of a stare at them and straight out again. So what we're going to do, we're going to collect them all up as what we can. Uh, see what we've got now. 
and then if we want to carry on, carry on. Uh, and then we may have to come back later, or perhaps at a night time when the uh, things aren't so visible. But we've got to be very careful walking on this floor. Uh, this holes, the farmers are telling me to be very careful. It's some of it's rotten through. So if you don't see me again, it's been nice talking to you. Obviously, you can see what's happening here. They're nesting all over the place. We've also, I don't know if you can pick this up, but there's like a, a trap door down to downstairs. I think we've lost a couple down there and they've dropped down. Uh, that looks well dodgy. I ain't going down there. They can stay where they are. Uh, I think the rest of them are outside. As you can hear, there's the farm dogs outside. I think uh, the couple that's gone out that window, the dogs have probably had, which goes to back up what we were saying earlier about poisoning. If, it, if they'd been poisoned and dropped down there, the dogs have got them. Farm dogs cost a fortune, thousands of pounds. The last thing you want to do is poison one of those and lose one of those through some uh, reckless poisoning. This is the way to do it. At least if the dogs pick this up. Nothing but wholesome food for him. Been a, for a bit of a walk around the farmyard, just check out some animals and uh, give the give the fellows a bit of chance to to regroup and get themselves back in there. We saw from afar they were landing on the roof and probably coming in through the end bubble. So hopefully, when we get in here, there'll be a couple more in here, uh, and we'll uh, we'll see if we can take care of those. Had a look around the animals, check the cows out, check the bulls in the uh, and the young calves. Everything's looking healthy. We check the uh, the uh, outside buildings. There's no fellows in any of those, so they're. Uh, Hopefully, they're in here, so uh, let's see if we can get some. Well, there was two or three in here, maybe four. Uh, all sat waiting for me to walk in, facing straight at me. So uh, once I came in, they fluttered around and I fell to the one of the open windows. Uh, they will be back. We'll give it probably another 20 minutes, half an hour perhaps. Give them a chance to come back in again and let's see if we can pick some off. Uh, I think the, we've, we've, got, we've got the plan sorted now for what we want to do the next time. And. Uh, Pretty straightforward. Probably need, obviously the best time for ferals is night time. Uh, but we've got one here now. Oh, I love it when a plant comes together. Obviously they're shot out because we've, we've freaked them out a bit but they've not gone far, come straight back in again. That's two that's shot and on the floor and I'm sure there's another one up here somewhere. Just wait for it to show itself and we'll have that one as well. sat in the rafters right in the corner where I could see his head. One appeared at the bobble, flown all the way around, come through the side door. 
landed right in front of it, gave me a clear shot between the shoulder shot. That's 10 for the camera, and there's at least another four that uh, I believe the dogs have had. So I'm happy with that. Daytime, as it were today, really hot. They're flying around, they're not coming back straight away. Uh, I'm happy. 10 of the daytime, that'll do me. Happy days. <laughs> Right, we've uh, we're going to call it a day for today. Uh, we've we've been here a few hours. The kits work superbly. Uh, I've been using the RWS Superdome field lines uh, in two two, five point five millimeters. I don't know if it's five point five one five two five three or whatever, but it doesn't say on the tin. But it's two two caliber and the fourteen and a half grains, which is quite light, uh, considering compared to some others. But it's worked really well. What I've done, I've turned the power down on the gun. Uh, for two reasons, uh, it suits the pellet. The pellet needs or requires a slower speed uh, compared to some of the other pellets of you, so that works all right. And the adjustability on the Air Arms S510 TDR uh, gives me that facility to turn the power down. So that's that's worked really well. Uh, another thing is we don't really want to be putting holes in the ceiling of the barn, uh, even though the roof's coming off and having a new roof on. Uh, I still rather not damage it if I can help it. So slowing it down a little bit certainly helps and taking the shots where there's uh, a decent backdrop on it helps as well. Uh, superb little pellet. Uh, really pleased with how that's worked. The the Pulsar Axion XQ38. I've reviewed one of these a while back when they first came out, the Axion Key. Uh, and obviously things have improved since then. This is really a cracking little scope. Fits in your hand, fits in your pocket. You don't even know it's there. You can well, I normally have a lanyard on my on my, on my thermals, but this one, don't need it. It's efficient and really nice. Into the pocket, out of the pocket, really quick. Uh, picks everything we need to see in the barn. Uh, works really well. Can't fault it, can't fault it at all. The TDR we've been through, the scope, is, again, is the Pulse Italian, uh, which is a, a, a recent scope, I do believe. It comes with its own mount. It's not the 30mm tube like the latest... Uh, other, uh, other scopes on Pulsar are. It's more of a, it's got a bespoke weaver picatinny mount that you bolt onto it and that, therefore the, the tube is not round so you can't put mounts on it. But that has worked superbly. Uh, we're only short range in here, probably maximum 15, 20 yards at most. Uh, we took edge shots, which you can see, which will be a little bit graphic, you don't want to see that. But generally I'm taking heart and lung shots uh, to get through the crop and drop it straight where it is. If you're taking a headshot and you've only got a little target to aim at, in such a place to barn, you've got the chance of missing. So the heart and lung shot with FAC will drop it instantly, not a problem. So that's why we're using that. All in all, excellent day. 10 for the picture. And we've probably got about 16 because there's some dropped out of the window into the dog pound of the bike. Uh, and I know they've hit the dog pound, so I heard them hit the floor. Uh, but the dogs have obviously had an extra meal today, which is uh, it's good for me. It's good for the dogs. Good for the owners, saving them dog food. That's about it. Uh, we, we're off to somewhere else now and we're going to uh, definitely call back here at night time when we've got a whole different thing. The, the, the feathers will come in and they won't move and we can take the shots one after another. Uh, they might just edge up a beam uh, when, when you take one out, but generally they're going to stay in the building. So that should be another cracking night and hopefully another cracking video. So. That's about all I've got to say about this. It's all been pretty good stuff. Impressed with everything we've got. Appreciate you watching. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.